So, hello everyone and uh, good afternoon, or uh, more precisely, if, good morning if you are in America, good afternoon if you are in, the, in Europe, and good evening if you are in Asia or Australia. Welcome to the GREP webinar 2020. As you know, originally this was supposed to be a GREP seminar 2020 held in Malta, but due to the current situation, we had to postpone several things, including this webinar. This now, it is going to be a seminar next year. So keep in mind, GREP seminar 2021. But uh, while we eagerly wait for next year, we have organized the Malta GREP webinar 2020. It is a more, perhaps more comfortable because we can wear more comfortable shoes if you are at home. <laughs> but uh, it is, we're glad that we have managed to organize um, this webinar and that we can see so many participants here right now in this webinar. I am Anthony Gallia, Dr. Anthony Gallia from the Department of Geosciences within the Physics, within the Faculty of uh, Science within the University of Malta. My current research is current, sea currents, where basically I study the motion of the ocean. All right. And uh, with this eagerness and with excitement of research and discovering the physics of the underworld, of the, 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 basically we study the motion of the currents. Coupled with that, I am also passionate about science communication. Okay, so I've been lucky as well to, to participate in uh, events such as FameLab, where you have to communicate science. But as you know, teaching physics is not just limited to schools. Okay, my comment is that teaching physics happens everywhere. We are all eager and we are excited to learn the science and the physics behind everyday life, be it a mobile phone, a communication between laptop and the, and the, and the monitor. And so, in fact, I've participated in other events where I've explained the physics of, for example, Harley Davidson, where, not in a classroom, but in a motorbike shop. All right, so one, one of the many shows. And People are always amazed that even simple stuff can be explained or complicated stuff can be explained by simple physics. And with that, with one show after a show and with this eagerness of science communication, okay, this is why I am part of the local organizing committee of this GREP webinar 2020. I am not alone, of course, we are a group of people. We are currently three people. So with me as well, there is Dr. Charles Bonello and Dr. John borch Marx, which I now give the floor so that they can present the upcoming presenters. Thank you all. The floor is, or the screen rather, <laughs> is to Charles. Thank you very much, Anthony. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to all of you. The director, deans of the Faculty of Education and the Faculty of Science, Dear GREP uh, President Professor Marisa Michelini and fellow physics educators, welcome, or as we say in Maltese, merhaba, to the GREP Malta webinar 2020, hosted by the University of Malta together with the International Research Group on Physics Teaching, GREP. In my role at the university as a physics educator, who relates mostly to future physics teachers, I find that the title of the webinar, Physics Teacher Education, What Matters, prompts me to reflect on the importance of having a physics education community that strives to nourish a scientifically literate and humane society. This is a strongly felt need in today's world. Since we believe in a holistic education, our passion and enthusiasm for physics should guide us not only to focus significantly on content matter, but also on inculcating in our student teachers qualities such as integrity, honesty, and responsibility. As a physics education community, we need to work at what the eminent Hungarian physicist Joseph Rodblat once said, I appeal to my fellow scientists to remember their responsibility to humanity. This is indeed an essential part of the whole scenario of physics education and of this webinar. I would like to conclude by taking the opportunity to thank the GREP committee 
and the work group leaders who were always very cooperative and constantly supported us. The commitment of these people was exemplary and indeed very encouraging. Thank you also to you, the participants who have submitted their abstracts and those who will contribute to this event by actually participating. Last but not least, I would like to thank my colleagues, Joan and Anthony. Sharing the organization of this event with you was indeed a meaningful experience. If I have unwittingly left out someone, kindly accept my apologies and please attribute it to a slip due to age. Now I wish to pass on the microphone to Joan for her input. Hello. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Good afternoon to all. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the uh, GREB Malta webinar 2020. For those who don't know me, I'm Joan Borschmark from, from the University of Malta, uh, Faculty of Science. I have been a member of GREB for many years and I have attended many GREB conferences and seminars. Um, and um, I'm happy to say that I'm also very happy to be forming part of this organizing committee from Malta for this webinar. The topics chosen for this webinar, as you know, are interesting and varied. And uh, most of all, point to one focus, that of producing better teachers, better teachers who can lead students to more meaningful learning, especially in physics, because this is what we are uh, talking about dur during this webinar, physics. I hope that everybody here through these three days that we are together will not only enjoy um, the having to participate um, in a webinar with this big family of researchers in physics and physics education, but also find the possibility for growing as a teacher, a teacher opening the doors to other people, other students, in as far as um, promoting uh, up the uptake of physics by the students that we come to meet, and also uh, helping them to um, choose physics as a topic in their further studies. I thank you very much for being for your being here with us today, and I would like now to uh, present to invite uh, Professor Alfred Vella, who is director of the University mm -hmm. of Malta, who has been really kind to be joining us today, and uh, who will be delivering his uh, welcome speech now. Professor Vella, please. Thanks, thanks, John, for that. <coughs> um, well, welcome to all your members um, from all over the world. Um, and good afternoon to those who are in the same time, time zone as we are. Uh, the University of, of Malta is actually uh, one year over the 250th anniversary, which we celebrated recently. Um, but the Faculty of Science is at, at the same university is only um, a few, about, about a century old, a bit more than a, than a century, in fact. So clearly, when the university was established way back, um, it appears that the priorities <laughs> were, were not quite the same as today's. Um, at that time, 250 years ago, they were teaching oratory and theology and and mathematics to be sure, but unfortunately physics was not on, on the curriculum at the time. Um, today, of course, we wouldn't dream of excluding from um, the curricular subjects, science and within science, what I regard as the foundation science. Um, I have to confess that 
I'm not a physicist, but but a chemist. But I I I think I think um, physics is at the base of chemistry, as chemistry is at the base of of biology. Um, so probably the, the the toughest science is is biology, but um, you can't understand it well unless you know your physics uh, thoroughly. Um, anyway, um, and of course, when we speak about physics, um, mathematics has to be part of the discussion. And I would like to hope that teachers of physics um, do underpin their teaching with math without confounding the beautiful science that, that physics is. Um, your responsibility as uh, to society as teachers of physics is, is great because we need as many students to go for the STEM subjects as, as we can manage. Um, science, a science educated citizenry is, is not only important because it it is required to, to equip the workforce of today and that of tomorrow for the sophisticated industrial demands that um, you know, we require as, as, a, as a society. But perhaps even more importantly, we need to empower citizens with critical and essential knowledge that can protect them from irresponsible fake news that unfortunately surrounds us all the time. Denial of climate change, the fear of vaccination in these days of COVID, um, the uh, people spreading the false uh, news about um, vaccination. I mean, we, we need to have educated people, logically, scientifically, critically minded persons. And I think the role of, of physics teachers and physicists in this mission is critical. So I wish you good work. Over to you, John. Thank you very much, Professor Vella. Um, I now wish to uh, introduce also Professor Sinagra, Emmanuel Sinagra, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Science. Um, we also wish to thank him for being uh, able to join us for this introductory uh, speech. Uh, during this webinar. Um, Professor Sinagra, please. Hello, Joan. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the JIRA webinar. Um, I'd like to, to actually start by saying that uh, yesterday was the, uh, the Feast of St. Albert. And St. Albert is the uh, patron saint of uh, natural sciences. So this um, JIREC meeting or webinar is uh, coinciding with, with something that, uh, you know, a, a day in, in, in the calendar uh, that is related to the natural sciences. Um, but anyway, uh, about a year ago it was that uh, Joan and Anthony came to me uh, asking for, you know, whether the, the uh, Faculty of Science uh, would would consider uh, sponsoring the the conference, in, you know, giving some sort of uh, financial contribution to to the uh, conference, the physical conference in in Malta, and and I agreed, uh, and I hasten to add that uh, that it wasn't a ploy by me to for, to have this. Uh, COVID business uh, so that I can get away from, from paying uh, the, uh, the sponsorship money. Mm. Uh, 
<laughs> but, um, well, actually, um, Professor Vella, the rector, has hit a couple of nails on the head there because we need students to, uh, to learn uh, about science, to, to, to learn rather than the knowledge, because science comes from the, the, the Latin word knowledge, really, scienza is, is, is where, what, 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 that's what scienza means. But uh, rather the, the actual process of, of getting to, to that knowledge. And uh, I've always seen physics as um, something that, that, that you can learn through also logical and, and thinking processes as well. So it, it, it's, it's for that reason that for a very long time, uh, physics and physics alone was the science to, to be taught at um, secondary level in, in Malta. So um, it, that, that is putting physics teaching in Malta in, in some context. The other thing that I want to uh, point towards is this business on fake news uh, and students being able or society in general being able to distinguish between what is proper science and what is just magic or, 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 or myth and, and, and things like that. Because it, it is very, you know, it is undermining what science is about. Furthermore, I think that in my lifetime, there has never been a more appropriate time to think about um, evidence-based policies, scientifically-based policies than now, this year, that we've had to look at science to give us what we should do next with the pandemic uh, involved um, in, in the scenario. And it is very important, therefore, that we continue to teach science and continue to teach science well. And, and, and what, you know, our students, our future generations will uh, hopefully recognize that, you know, when they were younger, they had the right uh, teaching and um, teachers as well. Whenever I, I, I speak about uh, teaching science, I always also remember that students should also be made aware that, uh, uh, that it, it's not cleverness that is at the bottom of science. Uh, you can sell cleverness, as, as one mystic once said, and, and you should buy bewilderment. Looking at the wonders of, uh, of the world and finding explanations for them or looking for explanations for them like why is a sunset red and, and why why can a sunset a sunrise be red as well but you know and things like that uh, those have always colored my uh, my world so to speak and, and uh, I hope that uh, we can teach our uh, future generations the uh, the wonder of sciences, the bewilderment of, uh, of science, and, uh, and seek the answers through their questions. Okay, thank you, and uh, welcome to this virtual Malta, and uh, have a good seminar. Thank you very much, Professor Senagra. We're very much obliged for your presence, and also for the presence of uh, uh, Professor Vella. Thank you both. Thank you very much. As uh, John was saying to you, Professor Sanagra, and your inputs, I wish to invite uh, now Dr. Colin Kaleya, Dean of the Faculty of Education, to provide his uh, welcoming note and his contribution. Dr. Kaleya. Thank you, Charles. Um, I would like to thank you for uh, inviting me to, to introduce um, this. Uh, webinar uh, together with these esteemed um, professors. Um, 
excuse my rugged face with this beard. This is the Movember University asked me to keep the mustache, but I, I opted for the full beard um, to, to, uh, um, uh, to leave the beard and, and speak on Movember, celebrating the Movember or remembering men's health. Um, I am also aware um, in physics terms of the fiction that my shaver will have to go through in order to shave it again. So uh, physics here is, uh, is, is uh, a knowledge that uh, gives me information. And this is really um, what physics is. Um, Professor uh, Anthony Gallia was talking about the out of the classroom learning, which is so important. I would say the importance of even inside the classroom, real world learning, how important that is, uh, because this real world is what makes science, physics in particular, so relevant to the day-to-day -day living um, out there. I remember my wife couldn't understand uh, the, the concept of leverage. And uh, when I explained it in terms of changing a tire and putting a longer leverage, oh, she said, why don't we study this type of science? Why did we study science that I couldn't understand? And I think it's very important of, of, uh, of talking of, you know, the uh, learner, educator, the educator that is continuously learning not only about his subject, but also about how this um, educator transmits this knowledge to other uh, learners. Um, as we know, the teacher is pivotal to whether a student likes or dislikes a particular content area. Giving our teachers a strong pedagogical foundation built on knowledge of learners' learning characteristics and research-based and effective methods is crucial to ensure that students learn our content area. I therefore really congratulate you on this event, on this event, and looking forward to next year's hopefully uh, physical seminar here in Malta. And on behalf of the Faculty of Education, I would like to thank you for choosing Malta to host both this webinar and hopefully um, next year's 2021 uh, seminar. I would like to wish you a fruitful three, two days of webinar or three days of webinar. I thank you and uh, hope that from these, from this webinar, um, a lot of ideas are generated that are then reflected on the type of education, on the type of of um, teacher education that we give out to our teachers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kaleya, for your time and for the insights that you have provided us with. I now wish to invite uh, Professor Marisa Michelini, the general president, to provide her introductory input. Marisa, the microphone is yours. Thank you so much. I'm happy and honored to welcome you here despite the epidemic that has now affected the whole world. Many of us, of us are now active for the remote work in which we have committed to contribute to the country differentiated segregation that has been taking place. 
In the past 54 years, 2000 physics education researchers, teachers, and other specialists of 76 countries shared their common problems, studies, results, and experience in GRAP initiatives. Out of teachers scattered far, in faraway schools and colleges and university, GRAP created a community. The GRAP decided to, re, to remain active and to maintain its mission to support physics education in the new needs by means of research and cooperative work in comparing experience. Let me first have the pleasure of thanking those who made this possible. First of all, I thank the Molta Local Committee, Charles Bonello, Anthony Galea, Joan Bor, Joan Bor Marx, assuming the responsibility to organize this webinar. The work with them in the last year was a great pleasure for their attention to any details and care to invent the best initiative for the quality of the webinar. I, um, I, thanks, I thank a lot the Malta local authorities supporting the initiative. First of all, the director of the University of Malta, Professor Vella, the dean of the Faculty of Science, Professor Sinagra, and the dean of the Faculty of, of Education, Professor Kaleya. I will thank also the EPS Physics Education Division and Multimedia Physics Teaching and Learning Cooperating. The, the two wonderful women, I have to thank the two wonderful women of GERM board supporting the organization, Dagmara Suklowska, uh, Vice President, and Elish McLogan, uh, General Secretary. I thank the, responsi the responsibles of the working group who accepted to do a very demanding and important work. Let me mention each of them, Peter De Mankin, Tonel Meyer, Lars Jor Jorgen Thomas, Jan Bardin, Leo Strack, Goras Planinzic, Sergei Faletic, Geshe Pospiak, Moitza Cepic, Marco Giliberti, Dagmara Suklowska, Dignia Curso, Claudio Fazio, Susanna Ieskova, Alice McLogan, Wim Peters, David Sands. Uh, let me thank also the GRAM board as a whole, which members now renewed in, in this January are me as president one more, I'm sorry, Wim Peters, vice president one more, Dagmar Soklowska, vice president, Alice Meskulogin, secretary, Claudio Fazio, treasurer and media officer, Paul Logman, GREP communication and GREP members. I want to thank the responsible of the thematic group of GREP on energy, Paula Aaron, on innovative pedagogy for physics at university, Gerald Feldman, for laboratory-based teaching in physics, Jan Bardin, for mathematics in physics education, Geshe Pospiak, for physics and society, Aristoteles Gikomas, for physics education research at university, Gennaro Guisasola, for physics preparation of teacher in grade key K6, Federico Corri and Voco Stamatis, strategies for active learning, Claudio Fascio, Fazio, technology in teacher education, Fatih Tazar. Then I want to thank the GIRE community on teaching learning quantum physics born at the, in January 1999 and having now 15 participants and being active here in uh, Working Group 3. Let me thank the president and the representative of the cooperating body here with us in the opening of this webinar. The representative of 
American Association for Physics Teaching, the American Physical Society, the European uh, Physics um, uh, Society, uh, the YACPE and CIAF, here present by uh, Eduardo Efraim Montero Caripio. I want to thank in particular him because he's all time so uh, participating in GREP initiative. Iser, here represented by Fatih Tazar, uh, MPTL with Tony Lermeyer, and those who cooperating at a distance send us messages, which are ICPE and Roberto Nardi in particular, Lapen and Sir Eduardo Multo and Cesar Morallai, Iacpes <coughs> with Leon Juric and Matthias Zimmerman, Peggy uh, with the representative Murata, president of the association, and Zera, in particular Costas Costantino, who won GREP each time, having a, a special activity in a Zera meeting. When I see so many colleagues here online with Malta from so many countries, to work for this webinar, offering so many and good contributions, I have to thank those who initiated this movement and created the first international physics teachers research community, organizing the first GREP activities and their presidents. GREP is an international membership organization founded in 1966 open to academics, teachers, curriculum developers, and all other stakeholders with the concern to improve physics teaching and learning by means of physics education research, by means of innovative experimentation in physics teaching and learning, <coughs> but, sorry, by means of innovative materials and methods, suggestions for stakeholders, and international cooperation in conference seminar, selected paper books. GREC conference up to now are 36 international conference cooperation with European Physical Society, International Commission of Physics Education, Multimedia Physics Teaching and Learning, and UNESCO. Six GREC seminars are held up to now in Belgium, Udine, Ljubljana, Krakowia, and Malta. Two world conferences in physics education, the next one will be in Hanoi. GREP seminar for teacher associated and conferences. We are, have uh, recently thanking Rosario Battaglia and Claudio Fascio renewed the, the GREP website. We have a, an active newsletter. We have 60 country representative seminar for teachers. And I want to mention GREP books, 30 proceedings of conference are in website and from 2015 Springer books of mathematics and physics interplay and on the best paper of the conference of Wrocław, Krakow, Dublin, San Sebastian. And then we have proceedings by Institute of Physics published each time. For the 2020 GREP, prioritize an event encouraging active participation for each attendee. A model that we have recently experienced in other webinars successfully for this work, the coordination of the working group responsible is important. Each working group has three sessions. The first one is planned to be dedicated to flash presentation of selected contributions that are offered in advance to the attendee. The second is to discuss issue, question, considered important for the topics of each working group prepared by responsible, and the third session for the individuation of the main element for a position paper. The pandemic crisis has shown us how open and international research and education are important. We are living 
new experience, developing knowledge and designing the future. Teacher education based on research and comparison are the basic of future perspective. Minds are the parachutes. They only function when open. Thomas Dewar and also Albert Einstein say, we want to work in this perspective, looking to the future. Let us take the opportunity of the crisis by looking to the future from a global perspective. We have new responsibility and new roles to deal with, which requires the ability to innovate. Innovation today must look at the new organizational models of knowledge and, and teaching. Our goals are continuous education, inclusion, and the support of new technology as a new ways for developing professional teacher education, able to form the new generation and their future. I wish you, you fertile work in the perspective dedicating the webinar to Lillian McDermott, the little great woman working for more than 30 years to establish research in physics education as a field for scholarly inquiry by physics. She received the Gillen Medal in 2015, and uh, I believe she is uh, one uh, my stone of our, of our education and research in physics education. Many thanks to participants of, for offering their work and contribution to the discussion of the webinar topics. I invite now the Vice President Dagmara Soklovska to present the memorial of Lillian McDermott. Then we will have a little video and Paula Aaron maybe will say some word. Thank you to everybody for contributing to this challenge. This is our Malta webinar. Marisa, would you like me to go ahead? Yes. Okay, sorry. Is that, can you see me and hear me? Okay. During the summer, a very sad information has reached the community about Professor Lillian McDermott passing away. Lillian Christie McDermott was widely recognized for her leadership in promoting the importance of physics education research as a sub-discipline of physics and developing research-based curricula that have improved student learning of physics from kindergarten to graduate school. Her foundational work in physics education research has had an international impact on physics education and her record of publications, accomplishments and awards is second to one in the field. Professor McDermott received her PhD in experimental nuclear physics from Columbia University in 1959 after teaching at City College of New York, Seattle University and the University of Washington. She collaborated with Arnold Arons, who had uh, gone to the University of Washington to establish a program in the Department of Physics for the preparation of pre-college teachers. McDermott expanded the program to include high school teachers. It has since become the longest lived teacher education program based in university physics department in the United States. Professor McDermott uh, was appointed to the faculty in the University of uh, Washington physics department in 1973 and promoted to full professor in 1981. With her colleagues, she conducted research on the learning and teaching of physics and applied the results to the design of curriculum. The group was engaged in developing two sets of research-based instructional materials, tutorials in introductory physics and physics by inquiry. 
Both were widely distributed in the US and have been translated into several other languages. For more than 30 years, Professor McDermott has worked to establish research in physics education as a field for scholarly in inquiry by physicists. In 1973, she began a new program in which graduate students earn doctorates in physics for research on the learning and teaching of physics. The group has served as a model for discipline-specific educational research and curriculum development and produced numerous trailblazing articles. Many of McDermott's graduate students and postdocs have gone on to faculty positions in the US, US Germany, and South Africa. Similar PhD programs have been since set up at several other universities in the US. Many physicists from around the world have come to University of Washington to visit or to work with the physics education group. Professor McDermott was a fellow of the American Physical Society, the American Association for the Ad Advancement of Science. Among the numerous awards she has received are the 2000 Archie Mahan Prize of the Optical Society of America and the 2000 Education Research Achievement Award of the Council of Scientific Society Presidents. She was recognized by AAPT with the Robert Millikan Lecture Award in 1990 and Ursted Medal in 2002 and the Melba Phillips Award in 2013. In 2002, she received the Medal of the International Commission of Physics Education for longstanding contributions to international physics education during Udine Jurep ICPE Congress. And in 2008, shared the APC Education Award with colleagues. In 2014, she was given the University Faculty Lecture Award one of the highest honors at the University of Washington. In 2015, as Marisa Michelini already mentioned, she was awarded with Jurep Medal. Professor McDermott has been a counselor of APS and a member of APS Executive Board. Lillian supported Jurep goals in physics education research and in bridging research and practice, having contents at as background reference since from 1996 and mm -hmm. from 2003, her contributions were continuous and a great referent for GREP activities. We will miss Professor Lillian McDermott very much. Thank you so much, Dagbera. I will show, uh, I ask Anthony to show the video. <coughs> Thanks a lot, uh, Anthony. I will ask now Paula Heron to say some words. She is now the responsible of the Lilia McDermott Group in Washington University, Seattle. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to talk um, about Lillian just very briefly this morning, because I think that everything that's been said so far is um, uh, you know, really paints a picture of, of who Lillian was. The photos that were just shown in that wonderful video, the first ones just, I think, really captured the intensity and the passion that Lillian had when she was directing a workshop or giving a talk or anytime she was talking about her work. She really was a, a dynamic and a, a vital person. So as it was mentioned, she obtained a PhD in, uh, in a traditional area of physics at Columbia University in the 1950s when there were very few, fewer even than now, women in physics. 
Um, when she followed her husband to the University of Washington, she met Arnold Ahrens and then discovered her research, her, her interest in and her talent for physics education research. She felt very strongly that the skills and perspectives of an experimental physicist or a theoretical physicist, but in her case, an experimental physicist, that those skills and perspectives could be really brought to bear fruitfully on problems in education, just as they are brought to bear fruitfully on problems in physics. She also felt very strongly that physics education was about more than learning the concepts and principles of physics, that it was really about developing a way of thinking about the world. And so the remarks that were made earlier by some of the um, dignitaries who opened the conference about scientific literacy and critical thinking, um, she would have agreed very much uh, with those sentiments. Um, Lillian's left a tremendous legacy. As it was mentioned, she was instrumental in establishing physics education research as a scholarly field of inquiry for physicists in physics departments in the United States with graduate students who would earn PhDs in physics for research on the learning and teaching of physics. Um, her legacy also includes the many innovative research studies that she published, um, the uh, instructional materials that she's an author of, tutorials and in introductory physics for university students, and physics by inquiry, which was intended for helping elementary, um, primary, and secondary school teachers develop a deep understanding of physics and the ways of thinking of, of physics. She also mentored many colleagues, graduate students and postdocs who share her passion for research and for teaching and who are continuing the work that she began. So this legacy um, ensures that her influence will continue to be felt for many years. But those of us who worked with her closely um, and those of you in the Jarep um, family who saw her maybe only briefly, um, we continue to miss her humor her enthusiasm, her dedication, and her sharp intellect. She treasured the many friendships she'd made uh, in the Jarep community. And so dedicating this meeting to her is a wonderful tribute. And uh, on behalf of her colleagues and her family, I thank you all for this, um, for this wonderful occasion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Paula. Thank you so much to everybody. I will ask now to Charles to let us know and to Anthony to let us know for the program. Anthony is directing it, the, the yes. separate groups. So, um, yes. So basically what will happen, you have, you have all received a PDF with all the links. One link per work group. What will happen now is that you can leave this webinar and go to one of the links that you need, click on that link and you automatically will enter the, the way group meeting that you have. The program, I'm looking at the program right now, um, it reads that we should be back here at uh, um, 4.30. Is that correct, Marisa? Since we should have started half past two with the way group uh, meetings, should we add two hours from now or um, should we still- two hour if possible, uh, two hours from now, but, uh, but uh, uh, less than two hours from now is possible because we have, uh, we have to start the medal ceremony. So at what time should we all meet back here? So we are, we are late of uh, maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. So we, we, uh, we yeah. have to be uh, four, 45, Okay, mm -hmm. so it is mainly as a note for the leaders as well. Keep bear in mind that we shall meet back here at 4.45, Malta time, of course. Okay, so it's a bit less than two hours. So when, when it is time to leave the work group meeting, okay, leave that meeting and uh, click again on the same link that you used to join here. Okay, it is as if we're going to start again, but of course we're meeting. It is, it is as if we are in an actual meeting where you're going to leave the room and go in the corresponding room and then come back here. So we'll meet back here at 4.45 Malta time. Is that clear? Okay, so see you in the way group meetings and then at 4.45 here. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs>
Marisa, I will be here just in case there are problems. Uh, you're muted. One moment. Yes, thank you so much. I'm. I have to to see if the group is working and is mm -hmm. everything is okay. That's it. Yes. I have to try now. <clears throat> 